The president says new sanctions on Iran will all but guarantee the failure of diplomacy over its nuclear program, a point he made in the State of the Union last night, insisting again he will veto any measure from Congress to levy, potentially, new sanctions. That's almost a carbon copy of what the president said last year on Iran. Listen to both. Between now and this spring, we have a chance to negotiate a comprehensive agreement that prevents a nuclear-armed Iran, secures America and our allies, including Israel, while avoiding yet another Middle East conflict. There are no guarantees that negotiations will succeed. And I keep all options on the table to prevent a nuclear Iran. If this Congress sends me a new sanctions bill now that threatens to derail these talks, I will veto it. If Iran's leaders do not seize this opportunity, then I will be the first to call for more sanctions and stand ready to exercise all options to make sure Iran does not build a nuclear weapon. Mark Dubowitz is executive director of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies and joins us on this issue often. Mark, great to see you. Let's talk a little bit about what the president said last night. It was noted in the write-ups uh, following the State of the Union that he only received a very small applause when he was talking about Iran because, the writer suggested, there is bipartisan support for new legislation that would put sanctions in place eventually. You're someone that advocates that legislation. Why do you think it's necessary? Jenna, we, we've been negotiating with the Iranians for 12 years. Uh, the Europeans have negotiated with the Iranians. The United States joined those negotiations six years ago. These have been interminable negotiations. And the fundamental problem is not a problem of the U.S. Congress or the U.S. Pro president. The fundamental problem is that Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, it refuses to compromise. And he refuses to compromise because he believes that there is no reason for him to do so. There is insufficient threat, economic, political, and military threat to his regime. And so why compromise now and give up on future concessions? Has that changed we at all with the oil prices, Mark, because of the oil prices dropping significantly, Iranian's economy being hurt by that, plus you have the, the sanctions, some of which would relax. But has that changed the dynamic at all? It's changed the dynamic in favor of Iran, in fact. I mean, Iran's economy was on its back a year and a half ago. It's now it's on its knees, and it's slowly getting up to its feet. Oil, dropping oil prices is going to have an impact, but yet the IMF and the World Bank are still projecting that Iran's economy is going to actually experience modest growth and a 50% cut in inflation rate. Mm. That compares to a deep and severe recession a year and a half ago. And the reason for that recovery is because President Obama de-escalated the sanctions pressure, unfortunately. So the White House apparently is going to members of Congress and just asking a delay in the legislation, a vote on this legislation until after March, which is when the next meeting is supposed to take place. What are your th thoughts on that? Why not wait until after March to do so? The, the reality is, is that when you, you know, talk to Western officials, they are very skeptical that anything is going to come out of these negotiations. And unfortunately, this deferral, this delay, this extension is only helping the Iranians. It's building their economic recovery, and it's hardening their nuclear intransigence. The only thing that will send a message to Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei that he needs to compromise is escalating economic pressure. It's time for Congress to put that in place now and then actually tie those sanctions to the June 30th deadline. These are deadline-triggered sanctions. They don't come into effect immediately. They come into effect only in July. And if, and if potentially the, there is no agreement as there has not been. The president went back to some familiar rhetoric last night saying this. I'm just going to read this one line. The American people expect us to, not, to only go to war as a last resort. And I intend to stay true to that wisdom. And there seems to be that choice. You know, if these negotiations must work or it's going to be war. And there's nothing in between. And I'm wondering, in your opinion, what is in between? If the negotiations do fall apart and they do fail, does that mean we're going to war with Iran? Now, Jenna, for 12 years, the Iranians have faced escalating ec economic sanctions, and they've never walked away from negotiations. And if they have, they return very quickly. And the reason for that is that these negotiations actually play to Iran's advantage. Iran has used them very successfully to advance its nuclear program. They also know that if they walk away, the U.S. Congress will move forward with a trade and financial embargo that will collapse the Iranian economy. So I don't believe the Iranians are going to walk away. And if they walk away, I think the Iranians are going to come back to the negotiations. I disagree with this false choice between, you know, diplomacy and war. The reality is the only thing that has actually 
shook the Iranian regime in the past, and it's something that the administration acknowledges is escalating economic pressure. That guarantees, or at least raises the likelihood of a successful comprehensive deal, and that will mean that we will actually have a peaceful resolution to this problem. We have a lot of powerful Democrats that agree with this new legislation, so it'll be interesting to see, do they wait to delay it until March, or do they move ahead with it, uh, regardless of what the president says and what the White House has to say? Mark, great to see you as always. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Jenna.